Hey, today I'm gonna to tell you about a real life blunder that I made which almost derailed my $9 million project because of a bad feasibility template. It's a lot easier to derail your project than you think. All you gotta do is get on the wrong side of the tracks, I mean the banks, and they will happily derail your project for you if you are not careful. So watch this video to ensure that you always stay on the right side of the tracks. A few years ago, I embarked on a 12 townhouse project in Melbourne. The total sale value of the project was $9 million. This was a big project for me at the time. For example, land acquisition costs were almost 2.8 million. We had stat fees sitting at 105K. We had finance costs for almost $265,000 for the, for the loan. We had for other ancillary costs, for example, five grand, another holding cost for 66,000. We had service connection fees. We had marketing costs, we had uh, site works, we had all this stuff. We haven't even looked at the construction side. So construction was almost 3 million. And then we had drawing consultants and so on. So the total cost of the project at the time was about 6.5 and that was just that. And we sold the project for almost 9 million, actually just over 9 million. And it had some uh, GSD implications and so on. But that's what, you know, that was a big project for me at the time. From the very beginning, I was watching every move uh, with half the town houses pre-sold, I was on track and my eyes laser focused on that bottom line. My experience so far had been working with hard money lenders, but this time I was dealing with a top tier bank and it nearly derailed everything. So here's what happened. The valuation threw me off. PRSV, the project related site value, was not where I expected it to be. Despite my best efforts to dispute the numbers, the reality hit hard. Banks have their own total development cost or TDC. And what does that mean? So now believe me, this is exactly what all my property gurus told me. They said to me that if your core total cost is 100 and you go to a bank for your development and you wanna fund the project, the bank will give you 70% of the total development cost. Now, 70% or 63%, 65%, it may vary from the risk profile of the project, but that is what it means. If the total development cost of my project is let's say 100, and I go to the bank, bank will fund 70% of that 100. That means I have to come up with 30 bucks and 70 bucks will be funded by the, by the bank or by the lender. But what if the bank says, hey, you might have spent 100 bucks for on this development, but as far as we are concerned, we only consider that your total development cost of the project is 80. What does that do? Suddenly I'm out of pocket extra 20 that I have to come up with. And if you look at this overall effect now, the bank is bank is saying, hey, your total development cost maybe 100 in your books, which is the actual one. I mean, I might have spent money with the accountant. I might have spent money on due diligence, on finding the site and so on. And the bank says, hey, none of that. We are only concerned with hard costs. So now this is a very common. So if the bank says, hey, 80 is your cost and we will give you 70, that means the bank will give me 70% and I have to come up with the extra $24 from that. But then once my total cost is still 100, so the extra 20 that the bank is not no longer going to fund me for, I still have to come up with that. Suddenly, I'm now 44 and the bank is now 56. And even though they advertise that we fund 70% of the development cost. Now, believe it or not, this is exactly how it happens. And this is, you know, the bank might say one thing, but when it comes to assessing your site for development potential, they might just come up with a totally different number as to what they consider to be the total cost of the project. My total development cost was 6.5 million. Now let's just close all of that and let's go back to 100. And let's say that was it, it's 6.5 million, which is the total development cost. I had to come up with 30%, which is 1.95 million and four and a half million would be funded by the bank give or take. So that gives me 30, 70% split. But when the bank says, hey, I will only consider $80 as your maximum cost, what that is doing is that I'm suddenly out of pocket $910,000 that I've got to come up with. And that's exactly what happened. Suddenly I was out of pocket by a significant margin. Old methods had worked before, but now they almost made me drown. I did sync with some cash, with some credit and some deal with trades, I stayed afloat. And the lesson that I learned was that always have a funding table built into your property development and feasibility software 
so you can foresee the bank's TDC. Now, Smart Feasibility Calculator, which is one of our most used calculator for financial feasibility, already has a built-in funding table that allows you to come up with options based on bank's TDC or total project cost or total sales or the maximum debt. Now, for example, let's say you've spoken to a broker and the broker says, hey, no matter what you do, I can only get you 2.5 mil. So you can calculate based on that as to, okay, that's what my funding is and everything else has got to be, the project's got to be funded with something. So it's either your money or the bank's money. If all you can borrow is going to be 2.5 million, that means everything else is has to be funded by you, for example, 6.8 in this scenario. So, and the maximum equity, let's say this is an entrepreneurial way of thinking. So, and I used to do that a lot with my projects because I, I never look at a project based on whether or not I can do this. I just look at a project whether or not I can raise money to be able to do a project like that. And in that scenario, I look at, okay, I only have 1.5 million. Everything else has to be funded where is that money going to come from? So in that scenario, that funding option also is available through Smart Feasibility Calculator so you can understand. It is very common to have the bank TDC percentage as a percentage of the cost and sales. Usually you would find two as a percentage of cost or as a percentage of sales, but this is kind of a further granular breakdown because one, you can go with the total cost of the project, one, you can go with just the hard cost of the project and so on, and you can select any one of them to use. And that's why I, continuously kept developing a funding table and kept building that into my feasibility applications as well as all my feasibility templates. So I never got caught out after that incident. So, um, and that was a big lesson because I lost sleep, I, <laughs> I lost everything. I almost lost everything, but I managed to keep the project afloat and finish the project in time. Now, that's not all that happened. The bank wanted to continue using me as their punching bag. You know, when you're a developer, everyone wants to have their finger in your pie and lenders by far have the greatest share. Anyway, so here's the double whammy. When the bank used their own total development cost to calculate the maximum debt for my project, I figured coming up with more money was my only problem. But little did I know there was one more thing that was about to hit me like a wrecking ball. Before you go, there is one more thing that you need to know. Let me explain. When you're developing and you are required to put an equity into the project, the way it works is this way. For example, let's say it's gonna take 10 months for the construction to complete. Um, and for the first three months, any funding that is required that goes into the project, the bank will force that the developer puts their money into the project first. It's only for bigger projects where the developers are big institutional developers and they can negotiate that, you know, funding goes simultaneously, which is called Pari Pursue, or the or, or the bank's funding comes in first and their comes, funding comes in later. But 99% of the time you will find small, medium-sized developers, they don't have any negotiate, negotiating power as such. So banks will force the developer to put in their equity first into the project. So what this means is that you've any number that you've got to come up with, let's say in this scenario, I had to come up with 70%, I had to come up with 30%, so all that 30 is gone into the first three months. So that means I, at this point, have no money left uh, to handle the project. Now, no developer should do that. Always make sure that there's always uh, a buffer generated and a buffer available to you. So, and luckily I had that buffer. Or I had people I could tap into to be able to get that buffer going so that I can take the project from here all the way to there. And when the construction starts drawing, you don't really draw the entire money on day one. So let's say the bank starts giving you money and you start drawing down on your construction loan. You you won't be drawing all of it on, on the first month or, or your, on your first drawdown because the construction happens in a different way. It's called the S-curve and all that but I'm not getting into those details at this stage. So what you need to know is that there is an interest that the bank has calculated that after you have drawn down the entire loan, let's say your interest is going to be 265,000. And this is where the double whammy is, where even though they have approved a loan to you, even after saying, hey, we don't consider you know, 100 bucks to be the cost, we consider 80 bucks to be the cost, you have to come up with the 44 yourself, and that's 44 is gone into the project now. But now you're thinking, okay, we'll get that 56% for sure. But no, what the bank actually do, and all top banks do this, even though they've approved the loan to you, but they will hang on to that interest reserve that they have calculated for the duration of that construction loan. So let's say if you've drawn down everything little bit by bit every month and the total interest for your whole project is about 265,000, let's say, which is in my case, that's what it was, the bank's gonna never gonna release that money to you even though that money is part of that 56% that they say would, that they will give that to you. Now, I learned this the hard way. 
trust me, I spent 35K with a development mentor, another 10K with somebody else who never called me. And, and none of these people ever mentioned any of this to me ever. This is a 100% true story. And I was in the middle of the project when I realized that, hey, I mean, initially I thought that 900K out of, out of pocket, that is my only worry. Okay, let's find out. But then I was hit with a wrecking ball in the middle of this project, which almost, you know, caught me off guard because I was banking on that 265K because that is another 265K you got to come up with on top of that. Uh, 910 which makes it 1.175 for me to come up with in the middle of the project so the, what we learned was that hey the bank is not going to re release that money to us because that is known as the interest reserve which means that the bank protects the reserve the interest that they are going to make from that project uh, and they will never release that to you you just have to pay it back at the end of it which basically means that you come up with that money yourself you finish the project whatever it is and you still owe them the full amount of money that is the interest that that they never release to you and they're holding on to it um, from day one so and it's common practice it's not that the banks are bad or anything but it's just that i didn't know at the time while i was in, in in the middle of the project here's the one last thing you must know or perhaps make sure that your feasibility template tells you because this is what happens when you have to put more money into the project it brings down your return on equity and your irr which is your internal rate of return because now more money is required by you for the same amount of profit. Now, if you wish to do everything in your power to ensure that this never happens to you, then click the link below and start your trial of our lead developer feasibility suite. It has everything you've been looking for.